So we can all pretty much come uh, agree that Ed Hartwell ain't shit. Now, while I'm not going to paint him out to be some villain, I will say that it was kind of fucked up, Ed, for you to marry this girl knowing damn well you were not in love with her. I mean, from what we understand, y'all dated for four months um, and you were married for six months. I saw six, some said eight. You were married for six months. And then you hit her with, I want a divorce. Now, she said on Entertainment Tonight that uh, she had found out your black ass was cheap. And uh, she told you, she, you know, let, let's get a divorce. And, you know, you I guess you must have wooed your ass back into her good graces. And she decided to let your ass stay around. Now, with that being said, Ed, it's also trifling how you basically called her motherfucking hoe. You call Rudy a hoe. Anytime a man questions if he's a father of a child or not, he's low key calling you a hoe, girl. He really saying you around her fucking other niggas. Now I don't believe with one ounce in my body that Keisha Knight Pulliam is a hoe. She may be a troll, and I'm gonna get to that later. But I don't think she's a hoe. Now. What we need to realize and understand is that these are two very well grown ass people in this situation. This is not like he was 45 and he preyed on a 21 year old. These are 30 something pushing 40 something year old a man and a woman. She's a very intelligent woman who made a stupid ass mistake. Let me just say something. Y'all motherfuckers y'all out here getting married at 4 months and shit when the truth of the matter is it's jobs out there who won't even hire you into a permanent position without working at least 90 days for them. But y'all oh, y'all hoes want to get married. And when I say hoes, I'm talking about niggas and bitches. I'm talking about, I'm talking about, a girls, <laughs> I'm talking about girls and boys. Y'all hoes out here want to get married for knowing somebody for only four fucking months. Four months, you probably ain't even, sh you probably ain't, ain't even shitted in front of that person. You probably ain't even passed gas. You probably don't know, don't know their credit score. You probably don't even know if they got a banking account or a checking account. Hell, they could probably be running around here with one of them badass rush card, Russell Simmons rush cards. Girl, you don't know nothing about that person in four months. So it just baffles me how she made a decision, a drastic decision like that to say, I want to spend the rest of my life with this person after only dating them for four months. Keisha, that wasn't smart on your part. So while we can sit here and call out Ed, we also need to call out Keisha. And another thing, Keisha, baby, I don't know how close you and Lisa Wu were. Lisa Wu is Ed Hartwell's ex-wife. She's now on Hollywood Divas. She used to be on the Royal Housewives of Atlanta. There have been a couple of pictures floating around with you and Lisa you know, smiling and kicking. Now, I don't know how long ago these pictures were taken, but the simple fact that if y'all were cool enough to talk to each other every time y'all see each other out in public and snap pictures at different on different days, different occasions, then it's just like, girl, Keisha, I don't know on a scale from one to ten how cool you and how you how cool you and Lisa were, but Clearly, y'all run the same circles, and clearly, y'all have some type of relationship to the point where y'all always posting for pictures together. And for you to turn around and fuck this woman's ex husband and marry him and get pregnant, Keisha, I'm giving you a side off for doing some trial up shit like that, too. I'm just saying. Why we not gonna call you no hoe? Because, you know, we gave Gabby, Gabby Union and Alicia Keys a, the stamp of approval when it came to being a hoe. When Gabby was sleeping with that man, uh, sleeping with Dwayne Wade, even though his divorce wasn't finalized, and when Alicia Keys was fucking with Mashonda's ex-husband, Fitz Beats, when his divorce wasn't uh, uh, finalized. But we're not going to call you no hoe, because you're not no hoe, but you damn sure trifling, though. Because while you smiling all up in that woman's face, you're going to turn around and fuck her ex-husband and get married and get break. But anyways, um... At the end of the day, everybody deserves to be happy. You know, as fucked up as it is, you know, Ed could have could have at least told her before they got married, hey, I'm not feeling this. 
Because there's no way in hell you can date someone for four months and then file for divorce six months into the marriage and say, oh, I didn't know these feelings just came. No, nigga, those feelings been there. Your ass just wanted to push them to the side and act like they wasn't there. Now, do I think Keisha was blindsided? A little bit. Because when you think about it, Keisha really... Keisha really hasn't been in the media. She's pretty much a private person. She doesn't put her business out there. So for her to come out and say that she's pregnant and then for him to backdoor like a week later and then file for divorce, I can I can kind of see how she could have been 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 blindsided. Um either she could have just been playing a fool like I didn't know what was going on. I thought we were fine, or either she really could have been blindsided. I really kind of think she was blindsided. Um, but again, like I said, everybody deserves to be happy. If Ed, if Ed felt as though it's best for him to leave the relationship, then should leave, leave, just leave. You don't deserve to be in a situation where you're unhappy and you should respect and love the person enough to make sure that they don't go through bullshit, any, any more bullshit than what they've already been through. You know, it may sound crazy, but at the end of the day, there's a blessing in that. When a motherfucker can tell you, I don't want to be with you no more, you need to take that shit and run with it and leave it and let it be done. And that's exactly what she said. She was like, I'm done. I have no desire to be with him. It is what it is and it's over. And that's the best thing you can do. You know? There's a lot of women out there right now who have been in relationships with men for years and years and years and years and years and years and, years and have two and three kids and this nigga is trifling and he can't even commit to her on his on his best day. And she's just trying to make it work, trying to make it work. Life is just hard. Baby, let me tell y'all something. We only got one chance at life. And when it's over, it's over. Y'all spend y'all, the majority of y'all life trying to be in these fucked up relationships. Have you stressed out, her falling out, all to say at the end of the day that you got a man. No, you don't, baby. You got a nigga living in your house and you still single. So, yes, it may sound crazy, but at the end of the day... When a man tells you he doesn't want to be with you, or if a woman tells you he doesn't, she doesn't want to be with you, baby, you need to take that, and baby, you need to thank them, especially this early in the game. You know, he could have been, again, one of those type of trifling-ass dudes who could have got her pregnant two or three times, was out there whoring around, and had her really looking like a goddamn fool in front of the whole goddamn world. This right here was just kind of like a little bump. You know, like, okay, girl, you made a mistake. You got married to a fuck nigga. He didn't give a fuck about you. You wound up pregnant. I mean, thank God she's financially secure. Thank God that she, I'm sure she has a secure uh, 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 family unit around her. Like I said, you've never really heard about her being in the media. So I think she'll be okay. But thank God, you know, this happened as early as it did. And it didn't go on for five and six and seven years. You see what I'm saying? Um, but at the end of the day, you know, um, I also want to say this too. What society needs to stop doing is making these women feel less than if they're not married or don't have kids by a certain age. And what I'm saying is I've said this in a previous video before. You know, when people say, oh, Holly Berry can't keep a man, what's wrong with her? Kenya Moore can't keep a man, what's wrong with her? How you know something wrong with them? How do you know that they just don't want to deal with somebody who they feel as though it's not good for them? You know, it's hard for people to believe that you can be happy and single. So, when these women are single and they say, oh, I'm happy, it's like, girl, she's not single. She knows she want a man. And so the pressures of society start falling on their shoulders. So they feel like, oh, shit, hell, I guess I might as well go get in a relationship. I need a, I need a husband. I need some kids. And then, of course, you have the biological clock. You know, women can only have babies for so long up until, you know, those eggs start getting dusty and crusty and expiring. So I completely understand that part. But it's just like, on top of that, they don't need the added pressures of people questioning them on why aren't you married yet? Why don't you have kids? Bitch, I'm not married yet because I'm not married yet. And I'm, I'm not having kids because I don't want no motherfucking kids. You know, so then when these women, they fall into this pressure of being married and having kids, I'm not saying this happened to Keisha, but I think it kind of was a little... Mm, these women fall, fall into these pressures of having kids and getting married. Then you go out there, you meet a nigga 
date for four months, get married, and then your ass sitting there pr four months pregnant, and this nigga gonna file for divorce from you a week late after he done, after he done told you after you done told the world you was pregnant. You see what I'm saying? It's just like y'all have to stop that. You know, I was having a conversation with one of my co with two of my coworkers one day. And we were just talking about, um, they were talking about how do I want to be in a relationship? And I was like, if a relationship happens, it happens. But girl, I'm not pressed. Girl, I'm fine. I'm happy. You, Y'all want no man? It's hard for people to believe that you can be happy and single. If you say you're happy and single, it's like you're talking a foreign language to them. They can't believe it. I know it's 10 times worse for women. Even with kids. You know, I was telling them how, you know, when I was younger... Before I, you know, <laughs> decided to go ahead and come out of my closet and live my truth, baby. Um, you know, when I thought I was going to marry a woman, I wanted a whole bunch of kids. I used to always say I wanted like six to ten kids. Um, I don't know if that was a cover up for the fact that I knew I thought I was gay. But anyways, I wanted a big, I wanted a lot of kids. And then um, when I realized I was gay, I was like, oh, I can't have kids because I'm gay. And then when I realized, oh, gay people can have kids. Like, you can go get a surrogate. Shit, you can still fuck a bitch and get a bitch pregnant. Um, there's plenty of ways you can have kids and still, you know, and still be in a relationship with a man. And then when I thought about it, I was like, mm, I don't want kids. And then it's just like, when I tell people I don't want kids, they're like, you don't even want to adopt? Like, you don't want kids at all? People think it's strange. You know, and so I know it's even harder for women when a woman says, I don't want kids. People look at her like she's an alien. Like, all I'm saying is let people live their lives, child. Stop putting these pressures on women to have kids and to get married. If somebody says they're happy and they're single, shit, they're happy and they're single. If a motherfucker say, I don't want no motherfucking kids, then bitch, they don't want no motherfucking kids. Damn. But anyways, um, in conclusion, Ed Harwell, you ain't shit for saying that that baby not yours and calling your wife a whore. Because that's basically what you do whenever a nigga say, the, whenever they question the, 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 uh, if they are the father of the child or not, you're basically saying that bitch was out there running them streets letting niggas bust her wide open. You ain't, no, you ain't shit for that. And you ain't shit for not going ahead and going through a divorce the first time she brought that shit to the table and said, hey, let's end this marriage. You ain't shit for that either. But I do believe you deserve happiness and happiness. And if your happiness is not with Keisha and I pull him, pull him, whatever her last name is, then it's good that you end the relationship as soon as possible. And that's what it comes down to. Keisha, you'll be all right. Um, girl, thank God your money, your coin is nice. Thank God you have a decent family from what I understand. But at the end of the day, Keisha, you don't have no business smiling in Lisa Wu's face and then going behind her back and fucking her ex-husband. And that's just what the fuck it comes down to. If ain't nobody else gonna say it, then bitch, I'm gonna say it. But girl, you pretty though. And you look cute in your interview. And that's all I got to say.